Welcome to our L Monitor Pro webinar on developments in Israel, including what comes next for the controversial judicial reform package. I'm Andrew Parasoliti, president of L Monitor, and our guest today is L Monitor columnist Ben Kaspit, one of Israel's top media personalities and analysts, and author of the best selling book, The Netanyahu Years. You can join the conversation. Please submit your questions via the Q&A function on Zoom. Ben, welcome. Our time is short. There's so much to discuss. Let's yeah. get right into it. We titled this program, Is Netanyahu Winning or Losing on Judicial Reform? You wrote Friday for a monitor that the prime minister may be having a rethink has changed and he has changed the tone of his approach to the legislation. The reform package may be on hold, where does it all stand now? If it was a normal state, you could you could say right now that Netanyahu is losing big time. But uh, Israel is not a, a normal or a, just another state. Uh, in Israel, it, it ain't over till it's over, uh, or li like we say in English, till the fat lady sings. Here uh, in Israel, we have a lady and she has a son that is right now in American jurisdiction. I'm talking about Yair Netanyahu, the famous. And the, the verdict was not out yet. Even bottom, bottom line in Israel is not the bottom. You, you always reach the bottom line and then you hear knocking from beneath or from under. So you can never say it finally, but it looks like the prime minister is losing. It was it was blocked on, on on seconds before the vote. The, the coalition in Israel is very stable, 64 hands, and he still did not. He choked on the last moment because of. If if you want me, I will get into details what blocked the prime minister. But right now there are discussions at the president's house in Jerusalem between experts and 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 the coalition leaders and opposition leaders. I don't see any solution or comp compromise yet. I don't know. No one knows the, the chances uh, of uh, such, a, such a compromise, but the prime minister finds himself in a very weak uh, uh, point. He, he fired the defense minister and then he regretted he could not even fire a minister in his cabinet. And uh, my guess, as many others, is that he told uh, the expert in Moody's uh, the international consulting uh, company uh, that is not going to have any judicial package without a broad and wide consensus. And this is a loss. But as I just said, it's too early to call. Is Prime Minister Netanyahu's coalition threatened by any of this? Is his hold on power less secure? I think if, if you would ask any Israeli analyst or citizen uh, right after the election, when you have this very homogenic uh, uh, government, uh, like we say in Hebrew, uh, right, right, right wing, uh, with 64 hands, everyone thinks the same. Everyone uh, swore to defend the, the, the leader and uh, to, uh, to do whatever Bibi likes him to do. And uh, so everyone would tell you it is four or five years term. But right now, no one will, will tell you that this government is going to fulfill its, uh, its term. Uh, the, the conclusion is not that it's going to fall. It's not going to fall in the near months. But right now, when you see the, the security situation, which is, which is, going, uh, is uh, going worse all the time, the economic collapse, because of the uh, talking about the judiciary reform, what happened in the stock market, what happen, happened to the high-tech industry, etc., and uh, you see that the, the Netanyahu grasp on, on his coalition is weaker than, than we thought. And the weak point, uh, which I recommend to look at, is Itamar Ben-Gvir. Itamar Ben-Gvir, the, the Homeland Security Minister, the, the Middle East uh, pyromaniac that became the minister, uh, is not going to survive long more when he's, he became such a joke. Because right now, today, while we are marking the, the annual Holocaust uh, Memorial Day, we suffered a, a terrorist attack in Jerusalem. And uh, all the, the Ben-Gvir, uh, uh, you know, whatever he told the public before the election, nothing happens. 
So in, in, in some point he will have, if in order to save his political future, he will have to do something very, very dramatic or to demand something that Netanyahu cannot deliver because Netanyahu is, he, he has to explain everything to Washington. And then uh, I think within six months, one year, 18 months, Itamar ben will find himself with his uh, six next member out, and then maybe we'll go to election. But it is nothing that is going to happen in the right in the very near future. So Netanyahu stays out of court. Could you give us an update on the pending court case against him? Uh, interesting news about the, the, this court case because uh, it, it is three or four years uh, uh, since it began and no one saw the end of it. And suddenly the prosecution and the defense agreed upon a deal when they took off the list of, of hundreds of witnesses, they took off dozens of witnesses and they shortened the schedule. So Netanyahu is going to hit the stand within months, Netanyahu himself. And we are going to, uh, to face a very uh, interesting drama in this court, because right now I can assume that within one year we can have a verdict. And this, uh, we, you have to add it to all the other uh, reasons and things that happening, because if Netanyahu will, will realize he's not able to take over the judiciary system, to replace the, the, the Supreme Court judges, etc., in order to save himself from the trial, maybe he will prefer to go to a deal. A thing that he almost did a one or one and a half years ago, he almost signed a plea bargain. And maybe because he's supposedly, supposedly blocked with this judiciary reform, which is actually going to a dictatorship, and the, the 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 court is a, is a lot short, has a lot shorter schedule. Maybe this is time for him to decide. Okay, let's sign a deal and resign. But it may it, it may be wishful thinking. The one fact that I can I can say uh, uh, for sure is that the schedule is not so uh, long as we uh, thought it is. It is a lot shorter. Within within one year we can have a first verdict in the Netanyahu uh, uh, court. And then of course, uh, the, the losing side will appeal to the Supreme Court. And the billion dollars question is, will the Supreme Court on this point be controlled by Netanyahu or not? Right now, most of the chances that the answer is no. We already have some questions coming in and reminding our audience that you can submit your questions via the Q&A function on Zoom. Ben, we have a question here about U.S.-Israel relations. Is it the worst it's been since 1948? How bad is the relationship right now? And how much of a factor is the friction in relations with Washington a challenge to Netanyahu's position? We are not old enough to remember 1948 and uh, the Israeli-American alliance uh, uh, started a lot, uh, and, and not in the establishment of the of the state, but I don't think we had, we had a, a, a case when the prime minister was elected on November 1st and uh, still he does not have an invitation to the White House. This is unprecedented. Uh, we did not have, I think, a case even in the very, very difficult days of uh, Obama Netanyahu and Clinton Netanyahu, or maybe uh, uh, George Bush Sr. and Itzhak Shamir, we did not saw a body language of the American president when he was asked uh, on, on the, the, that, air for, uh, uh, that airport if he's going to invite Netanyahu to the White House, White House and he said no. Uh, someone in Israel wrote he almost vomited. And uh, I can tell you many more things because, you know, uh, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham just visited Israel. I think he met Netanyahu uh, uh, yesterday or the day before, and they have a common uh, uh, declaration, etc. But even Lindsey Graham, from my sources, in the calls that he did before arriving to, to Ron Dermer and to Netanyahu himself, and in the private dis discussion, four eyes or six eyes or eight eyes, between uh, these two men, 
he uh, let Netanyahu understand that is, it is not a, a partisan, the, the, the criticism from the United States about this judiciary reform is bipartisan. Mm. And most, many Republicans think the same. You cannot control the judiciary system. You cannot nominate the judges if you don't have a, a constitution, et cetera, et cetera. And the, I think uh, Netanyahu is not going, he, he will visit the White House finally. But it will not happen before the president will be convinced that he is not going to be embarrassed five minutes after Netanyahu leaves, that uh, th this uh, pose in the in the judiciary re revolution is not a, a, actually it, the Americans want it to be a delete, not a pose, not a time out, but out. And we are not still we are not there yet. But if you if you listen carefully to the prime minister that uh, he, he was interviewed a few days ago in his home base, uh, uh, channel, channel 14 in Israel. He did not mention a deadline or a, or a date. And he is stressing and saying over and over again that he is going for a consensus. So everyone understands that he's down the tree. He, he realized that this battle was lost. You can also hear it from uh, Simcha Rotman, the, the Knesset member that leads all this revolution. He said, listen, people, we will have this reform, but right now he cannot, he cannot commit a, a date or something. But if, uh, two or three or four weeks ago, Andrew, they were all very, very convinced that, that, that it's final. It's a done deal. They're going to vote and they're going to approve and, and, and they just stopped it. And I think it's it's time to mention that this, what we saw, the demonstrations in Israel that we saw and are still seeing every Saturday, still right now, are unprecedented. And right now they gained a very exciting and historical win over a very powerful coalition. But still, we are in the middle of it. We are not in the end of it. Ben, let's just, uh, one more a question came in on judicial reform and put a fine point on it. So can the legislation be stopped? Are these strikes having an effect? And the questioner asks, uh, could a mass indefinite general strike like the day after he fired defense minister also take place? Or is this going to be modified in some way or just lead to some type of stall over the next 12 to 18 months, as you say, and, and nothing happens. This is the Netanyahu system or, uh, or method is uh, to outmaneuver his rival until he's desperate, like he did to Obama, President Obama, to, uh, to uh, Hillary Clinton. And uh, what the demonstration, demonstrators uh, demand is putting away all of it not halting, not holding, not suspending, just, just get rid of this whole thing. It's a package of dozens of laws. We were facing the first one, the most severe one, but there are dozens of laws uh, uh, online waiting to be voted. And uh, what the, the demonstrators fear is that Netanyahu will play on time and he will weaken like, by the way, exactly like what happened in Poland. In Poland, there was mass uh, demonstrations and the, the government took a, a one step uh, back and then it approved it uh, in the right moment. So this is the big fear in, uh, in Israel. But we have to, to realize that it's not only the demonstrations. And Netanyahu realized that the country is not with him. Look at the polls. Look at the numbers. Is trailing Benny Gantz, uh, talking about uh, uh, to fit fitting uh, the 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 prime minister's office, first time in history he was uh, leading Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid in a two-digit uh, uh, lead uh, all the years. Suddenly, Benny Gantz leads in six points in Channel 14. He leads in many more points in the other channels, and he lost. Uh, Netanyahu lost between his. Uh, 32 mandates, and right now is 20 mandates or 22 mandates in most of the polls. He lost a third of his power just because of this. And also, maybe the, the number one reason is the, the the what happens in the army. He lost the pilots. He lost the, the uh, intelligence guys. 
the the all the units in the army, all the reservists, everyone. I'm talking about hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands just declared. If these laws will be approved, it's it's out. Of, we are out of the game. Don't count 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 us and don't count on us. And uh, while he's talking about uh, you know a possible military option in Iran, he's losing his power here in Tel Aviv. So all these re reasons together made him realize right now that he's not going. He cannot. He cannot approve it. But the question is, is it final? Is is it going? Is uh, will we see now a turnaround of, of the ship? or only just you know uh, taking a, a, a time out in order to attack in a different way a turnaround on the ship it means uh, by the way we are seeing signs it closed the temple mount for uh, the 10 last days of ramadan this is a, a thing if naftali bennett and yair lapid would do bibi would you know yell and scream so he did it is trying to cool the pyromaniacs in his government is uh, holding the the judiciary reform and all the signs uh, show us that he wants to go back to the place he was before, the centralized Netanyahu. What's the problem? He does not have a coalition for it. Because uh, if uh, Ben Gvir and Smotrich will leave him, he needs Benny Gantz or Yair Lapid to join him. And I don't see none of them doing the mistake Gantz did in 2019 again. Ben, uh, coming back to U.S.-Israel relations, and you and I have, have, have talked a great deal about this, and you've written a about it. How do you assess the uh, personal uh, relationship between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu? They've known each other for decades. Uh, there was the famous interaction on, on the airport where uh, he says, you know, I love you, Bibi. Uh, and in Netanyahu's book, uh, he talks about a very warm relationship over time with Biden. Has that come and gone given recent events, or was it overstated? Yes, it's a difficult one because Biden really likes Netanyahu. It's not, you know, you know, you know Biden more than, than I do. He's not he's not a showman. When he speaks warmly about Israel, when he says he's a, you can be a Zionist without being a Jew, etc. When he when he when he tells everyone dozens of times what he told. What Golda Meir told him the other day that uh, our secret weapon is that we don't have anywhere to go, it's all authentic. And with Bibi had very, very warm and good relationships for dozens of years. It's true. Right now, it, it looks like the president have had it. And it's not only the Netanyahu uh, uh, deeds, but also his son. And this this story seems like like fiction, but but it's true. Uh, Netanyahu is a son that is very influ influential on Israeli inner politics. He has uh, his own Knesset members and ministers. He tweets like crazy. By the way, since this story broke out that, that uh, the relations between the White House and Jerusalem were ruined by the the Sun uh, Twitter account, he just disappeared. He, he, they flew him to Puerto Rico. Right now, Netanyahu's son is in Puerto Rico. I think it's uh, under a ju American juris ju jurisdiction, and he's silent. And to hear from the son of the prime minister, uh, uh, time after time, that the Americans uh, finance the uh, a coup d'etat in Israel, and they pay the demonstrations, the demonstrators. And a few days ago, on, on Saturday, we heard from a from a Likud Knesset member named Tali Gottlieb that Obama was paying a news site in Israel named Walla to publicize things about against Netanyahu. So it's it's we call it the the poison machine, the Netanyahu poison machine. It is a, a, a phrase of that uh, Naftali Bennett invented, and this poison machine that usually is working against Israeli inside politics. Uh, just just to, uh, is uh, was aimed on the United States of America, and I think this is what broke uh, Biden. And uh, but after saying all this, I think it's repairable. If Netanyahu, if the, the miracle happens and Netanyahu is going back, forgets all these uh, plans to to control the the judges in Israel and to end the democracy, 
and he, he will try to to uh, to establish another government. I don't think I think he have any chance to do it. I think that Biden will accept accept him back. But uh, the prices Netanyahu is paying until now, talking about you know enlarging the circle of uh, peace with Saudi Arabia, when he sees that Saudi Arabia is enlarging its circle of peace with Iran, I think the prices Netanyahu is paying more too expensive that he planned to pay and we all know that this is a family that don't don't like don't like to pay at all ben uh in your article today for a monitor you talk about what that netanyahu may be perceiving a kind of separate reality uh given how he continues to talk about expanding the circle of peace under the abraham accords uh, still hoping against hope uh, that there may be an option to, to engage uh, Saudi Arabia and bring them in. And meanwhile, as you mentioned, there's the Saudi-Iran agreement and other Saudi foreign policy initiatives that don't seem to signal that that approach uh, or that connection is going to deepen uh, anytime near soon. But tell us how you see it and how you think Netanyahu sees it at this point, because this was a huge priority for him uh, to try to bring Saudi Arabia into the fold. Yes, it was one of his more of his four uh, most important uh, uh, missions in this term, enlarging. He calls it enlarging the 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 circle of peace, and he means Saudi Arabia, and he's also said it uh, uh, with the name of Saudi Arabia, but this strange uh, thing is that he's going on all the time, even uh, day before yesterday with Senator Graham, is uh, emphasizing it over and over again. It is, uh, we are in, I think it's it's bizarre, because everyone in Israel th uh, is asking, is this guy with us? Because what happens uh, on the ground in reality is totally vice versa. The Saudis are, are uh, rejoining Iran. The, the Saudi king was just uh, uh, called to, to Tehran, invited to, to Tehran. The foreign ministers were uh, meeting, uh, and not only Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain. You see all the region is moving from the Israeli, Egyptian, uh, uh, Gulf uh, uh, alliance to the other side. Uh, to the Iranian alliance, and it's, it is because uh, of Israel, because of the United States that is leaving the area, because uh, of the the new alliance between Russia and Iran, but also because the the weakness in Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was all the years was the the path to Washington. The Israeli Prime Minister was holding the keys to the White House. Right now, he does not have a keys to the White House for himself. But I still think if 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 Bibi is say is still saying it, and also Senator Graham was mentioning it, and he said that he, he himself told the Saudis that the way to prove that they are serious with the United States is normalization with the with Israel. So maybe this is another sign that Netanyahu is going for a turnaround. And if he's going for a turnaround, maybe the United States, the price that we will get from the president is paying the price, you know, the, the price uh, for a normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia is supposed to be paid by the United States. The Saudis don't need us as they need Washington. And if maybe, maybe there is a deal coming on that uh, you, Bibi, go back to where you was before and we will uh, take care of business with Riyadh. I still don't see it happening because Netanyahu does not have a coalition. Politically, it's a deadlock, but it's in the cards. Then we have a question about how all that's happening in Israel is related to what's happening in Israeli-Palestinian relations. Uh, how do you, you wrote about this for us on, on Friday, but Tell us more about how you see this issue. And, you know, there's a, a foreign affairs article by a number of distinguished scholars that's talking about the reality of the, the one state reality in Israel. Where does the Israeli-Palestinian issue stand in Israeli politics? What, one thing we cannot take away from Netanyahu, and uh, part of us uh, even uh, don't like it, is that he took 
off for, from the agenda, this two-state two solution. No one is talking or planning or hoping or thinking about renewing negotiation for peace, for establishing a Palestinian state side by side with Israel and all this, because of what he did in the last 15 years when he was in power. And this is true. On the other hand, uh, the PA is losing uh, legitimation, le legit uh, its legitimacy, and also it's, it's uh, you know, Hamas now is a lot more stronger than than the PA, and the, and we, we have the most extreme right wing government in Israel. But after all this, we don't see any solution to terror, because the the, the secret weapon of Netanyahu, the the weapon that helped him to to win all the years against the left wing or the peace camp in Israel, is that listen, you're making peace. But uh, they they still do they still kill us they st they they, they ex uh, send the suicide bombers etc the second intifada and so on, and so on. right now they established the most right no one stops him he can do everything everything he he, he promised to do and not only him what promise what Bezalel Smutrich promised to do what Itamar and they still cannot do it. And, and and I will say more that the previous government, what they called government with the, with the Muslim Brotherhood, with Mansour Abbas, God forbid, was a lot better in this uh, in this uh, field of security. The Gaza Strip, for example, if we remember, was quiet. It was totally quiet for one uh, more than a year. Uh, there was there was a fight with jihad, Islamic Jihad, but it was three days. So Netanyahu, I think the dream of the of the right wing let let idf win and we can solve terror this this balloon is exploding while we're talking and this is one of the reasons that i think that after uh, this government will uh, will be over i don't know to say exactly when the the chance for peace will be renewed because you will never be able to say in Israel anymore that, listen, give me the power, give me uh, the jurisdiction, uh, let me do what, whatever I want to do, and I, I will, there will be no terror, and nothing will happen, and the right wing will, uh, right wing will win. This is an experiment that is right now is just failing. So uh, the front between Israel and Palestinians are, is dead. There is no uh, negotiation. There is, uh, uh, you know, the, the security heads are talking, and we had two summits in Aqaba and in the in uh, Shara Mashech between the sides, but you don't see anything happening. You see only desperation on the Palestinian side, and I think we are reaching the 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 limit of power, and the, this government is, I think, the the last right 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 wing government in Israel because they just cannot fulfill anything. Then question regarding uh, Lebanon. How does the Israeli government see the uh, demarcation agreement and its implications regarding offshore uh, energy reserves in terms of its integration plans with the in the Levant and with the Eastern Mediterranean? And if you could also comment on the politics uh, around Lebanon, the threat uh, from Hezbollah. Yes, this is actually the number one topic in Israel, uh, the Hezbollah front, because uh, we had a few weeks ago uh, a suicide terrorist coming in from Lebanon. And it is very rare and it is a severe uh, uh, act, action by Hezbollah if it was committed by Hezbollah. And Israel did not react on it although the prime minister stated in one of his last remarks that we bombed or, or we hit Hezbollah targets. Then we listened to what the IDF spokesman said, and he did not say that we hit Hezbollah targets when we bombed Lebanon after the rockets. A few days ago, many rockets were shot. By the way, again, very rare to Israel from Lebanon, the, the Air Force, uh, Israeli Air Force attacked, but no Hezbollah target. So what people are saying, and uh, foreign media is uh, printing in the in the area, is there was an action, a military action by Israel against the Hezbollah target. 
it was not within these bombs by uh, bombardment, bombardments by the Israeli Air Force. But the front right now between uh, Israel and Hezbollah is very delicate. And as the, the intelligence, the military intelligence threatened a few days ago, a uh, first time within many, many, many years that there is a real chance of uh, having what we call the big, the new or the big uh, Northern Front War. It's not only the Lebanese war anymore. We had Lebanon War I, Lebanon War II, and now it's not the Lebanon War III. The next war will be the Northern War because uh, Iran will join, forces from Syria will join, Iraq, Hamas and Jihad will, will join from the Southern Front. So the chances for such a war are more, are, are, became bigger, it, not because the sides want it, but because of the situation of what we call miscalculation. Uh, this side will do this, the other side will do that, and then we'll find ourselves in a war. By the way, we all almost uh, found ourselves in such a war after these, uh, this bomber was able to, uh, to ignite his, uh, his uh, bomb in uh, Israel. It was supposed to kill many Israeli soldiers in one of the points that they were, they were, they were gathering, but by, by chance or by a miracle, it didn't happen. If it would be happened, right now we, we were already in a war. So all the sides have to be very, very careful about energy. You know, Netanyahu said that, uh, that the, the deterrence, the Israeli deterrence are, is weaker because Yair Lapid signed on uh, that uh, agreement with Hezbollah. So first, the agreement is not with Hezbollah, but with the Lebanese government. Second, Netanyahu promised that he will come back to power and cancel the agreement. Now, he's not going to cancel it because all the experts and all the heads of of the military uh, and intelligence uh, in Israel, they are all committed and, and there is a consensus that this agreement is good. Good to Lebanon because it gives it this state a chance to find its own gas and maybe uh, uh, revive itself economically. Good to Israel because it, it, it puts in peace all the Israeli gas uh, fields in the, this region, etc. So I don't see anything uh, serious happening to the energy a market in the Middle East, but if a war will be erupted, so, you know, the energy will be our last uh, problem. Ben, we've got about 30 seconds left and a big question for, for you to take on in such a short amount of time. Is Israel preparing for a military strike on Iran? The short uh, answer is yes, it's preparing. It, it, it invests a lot of money in it after a long uh, period that uh, it was deserted. Uh, but I think everyone knows Israel will not be able to do it alone. And if uh, Netanyahu dreams about uh, destroying or holding or blocking the Iranian uh, nuclear effort, he needs the United States of America not to join the attack, but to give him the, uh, the umbrella in all the fields. Right now, he's not having any umbrella from anyone. But but yes, we are exercising it. We are building it. Israel is building it. Uh, talking about, like, you know, bombs, air force, air fueling, refueling, etc. But I don't see such a thing, such an adventure happening, you know, in the next one or two years without the White House. Ben, this has been great. I feel we're just getting started uh so that just means you'll have to come back and do this again with us soon we will thank you for uh today thank you for all your contributions to our monitor to our viewers you can read ben twice a week at our monitor you can keep up with events in israel and ben and other uh El monitor columnists in our El monitor weekly newsletter which ben and arena basiste uh are the authors of and you can uh, subscribe to El Monitor Pro and go even deeper on the economic, business, and regional trends that are impacting Israel and the region in our Pro Memos. Thank you again, Ben. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you for having me. Again.